Hey everyone, uh, so welcome to this special session. We have a group of uh, residents, fellows, attendings, and we especially want to talk about the upcoming season. What will change from the students or the applicants perspective? How should they prepare? And also what we think the programs will look for in the applicants this year. How will they assess the application? How will they look at from it from an interview perspective? So uh, we have all these uh, topics that we want to uh, interact with uh, our panel. So now let me switch gears because I think the other thing you had mentioned and which is going to be very important is the virtual interviewing, the Skype interviewing or Zoom, mm -hmm. or however the programs do it. Uh, so Raina, let me go back to you. Uh, how will now programs, a, and we will come to how the students should prepare for it, but how do you think programs will assess someone over Skype? They are not used to these things. It's very new to them. So virtual interviews, what will programs look for? How will they assess, you know, in a 10, 15 minute interview? So what I think, what programs will do is that they're going to do a lot of background screening. They're going to know a lot about the applicant before they actually come on to the Skype interview. So mm. traditionally, what used to happen was they would give your application a quick glance and then, you know, most of it would happen in the interview. You know, they would see you, they would welcome you, you would have the orientation and then you would come to the interview, you would sit there for a while, get acquainted. I think a lot of that, there's going to be a lot of pre-screening involved at this point. So they'll kind of re-screen your entire application, make sure it's complete. And when you actually come on for the interview, they're going to be looking to see that who we saw on paper is that who we're seeing on the screen. Is this person, you know, completely different from what, what they look like on paper? Are they, they're going to want to look for professionalism. You know, they don't want, they don't want it to be a sloppy interview. They want, they want you to, they want to see that you've kind of, you, it's not the first time you're appearing on a Zoom camera or something like that, right? So they, they're going to be looking to see these things. How serious are you um, when you're appearing for this Zoom interview? I think that the actual interview itself might be more focused. Just they might have a couple of questions in mind. They're going to want to see how you're responding. They're going to want to see, you know, how you... Uh, body language is hard to assess, but they're just going to want to see how, how much of a genuine candidate you look like. Um, the, it's hard to, you know, pinpoint exactly what they'll be looking for, but I think they'll, they'll be looking for a match between what they see on paper and what they see on the screen and your level of preparedness. Mm. Speaking. Okay. Shailaja, uh, what are your thoughts in terms of what programs will look for in a <laughs> virtual interview? Because there are no, apparently no on-site, you know, meet and greet, meet with the resident, dinners, etc. Those things yeah. will be out. Right. So I actually was talking to one of my senior fellows uh, who went through in the last six months the uh, advanced fellowship match and it was all done virtually. So he went already through the virtual interview application process. So the one thing, and I have few friends who are going through the virtual fellowship application season right now, because all these happen before the residency um, season starts. And what I'm hearing and seeing is that there is an increased number of applicants for each program because there's no expenses related to travel and hotel stays. So all that funding is now kind of students are, uh, and applicants are diverting to actually broadening their chances. So there's more applicants than before for each program. I know as IMGs, we tend to actually just start off broad anyway, but you've got to keep in mind that you're now going to compete with a larger pool of AMGs for each program because they are expanding their application, broadening out their uh, application mm. uh, net. Um, with regards to the virtual interview process itself, so I heard that programs are trying to stick to the original format because okay. obviously this is a new thing for them as well. Um, they have been doing this with patients now for a few months, but the interview season virtually, everything going virtual is also new for them. So they are trying to minimize kind of changes in an already challenging situation. 
so you'll still have the same there won't be a pre interview dinner but some programs are probably going to consider having an informal zoom session the evening before instead of a pre interview dinner session where you will get an opportunity to interact with some residents in the program maybe the chief resident just like as informal social gathering virtually and then on the day of the interview again the format to the day i have not heard of major changes mm-hmm. um you'll start off the day with a powerpoint presentation that is shared via the zoom portal or whatever the programs decide to use as their portal with a powerpoint presentation about the program itself just like when you go on the day for the interview um whether they do morning reports they include you for the morning reports that's kind of a bit questionable so there may not be a component of you joining their educational activities because they themselves have probably have the educational activities all over the place at this point in time um but surely you'll get a powerpoint overview of the program either by the chief resident or the program director and then you will have the individual interview so you'll stop your zoom call where all the applicants are sitting together on this pre- for this presentation so you'll end that call and then you will be given allotted time slots for each and every um, interview panel member that you're going to interact with whether it's two or three for residency whether it's seven to nine for fellowship season um so you will log on at that point at your particular time slot uh, they'll call you versus you call them i don't know how who initiates that but then it's it's the same sort of set of questions that you have had before if you were going for an in person face to face interview um yeah. i have actually not heard of a lot of panel interviews um which i would have thought that there would be more panel interviews this season with everything going virtual but i haven't heard this this particular uh, senior fellow that i was interacting with he went for 16 interviews all virtually and among them only one was panel interview and the panel consisted of two members and he still had to interview with other faculty members in the same program separately individually so at the end of once you finish once all the students or applicants or interview candidates on the day finish their interaction one to one interaction with the two or three faculty panel members then they all they kind of all the students or people being interviewed on that day get back on a zoom call again all together in a group and then you would either meet the chief president or the resident who is hosting for the day saying hey do you have any questions any more questions about what you have gone through today a kind of um, basically like debriefing for the day um to just kind of see if you if they've covered all your queries or not and that's one opportunity for you to ask in any more questions if you really have genuine queries about the program so i think that is how the format that has happened so far in the last 6 months for the advanced fellowship interviews have gone through um and from what i um uh, found from that person talking to that person obviously your body language is there's still some aspect of the body language that you can demonstrate but then having that communication being able to maybe subtly crack a joke not like you know in a weird manner but a uh, subtle sense of humor apparently helped him um particularly given that there is no direct interaction and then although it is um a zoom virtual interview please do dress properly apparently there were people who were like who had a blazer and a tie on but they were in their gym shorts or something <laughs> at the bottom and then if you happen to stand up in the middle of the interview session that's going to be very very awkward <laughs> so those are the thing keep in mind like having the background very clean and clear don't have like funny posters or you know uh, weird posters up there at the back on your background and one important thing make sure particularly for students who are going to be doing this from abroad make sure you have good internet connectivity talk naturally test your internet connection two or three times before your time is up you know your you, you hit the clock for your interview session please this is very very important for people who are doing it from outside the us thank you yeah yeah and we do have uh, chintav shah as well so i think you're muted chintav can you talk or yes yes i can sorry i just finished rounding it's kind of a late day so i just got into this small area here so now i can talk yeah so we were uh, you know before you came in we were just talking about how programs may mm. look at some different 
uh, attributes this year in terms of assessing the applicants you know so Ryan has spoke about the focus on the clinical skills and, and right. uh, you know Karuna and, and Chad spoke about giving back to the community those kind of things uh, so that was one so your thoughts on what programs may look for differently and then we spoke about the uh, virtual interviewing you know how will programs assess so uh, you know whatever your thoughts are what you want uh, what have you experienced or heard of what, yeah how the so team? what I've heard from my program is uh, obviously I think Ryan or someone mentioned I was a little bit hearing into this is, is we're gonna have more people interview so this year we were actually inviting twice the people we would normally invite for an interview just so you you know that's one of the biggest things with this is that programs not spending any money so they they're just inviting a lot of people and it's also an uncertainty on our side as well is because we don't know who, who would want to come here because there's no interaction so so there's going to be a lot of a uh, lot of most of the programs that I have heard this time around are planning on inviting double than what they usually would would have people over mm -hmm. uh, just because you know with all this uh, stuff going on they, they don't know how actually the interview season is gonna is going to pan out. So that's that's from my program side. Also, you know, I think Ryan mentioned about the background checks and, and that's something that what my program's been looking into is they're going to do a deep, you know, research about the students or, or the, uh, you know, applicants as to what, how they, you know, have their influence on the social media and kind of if they're, you're, basically this will be for the international graduates, you know, for, for American graduates, they usually can contact the med school and, and get the report, but for, for international national medical graduates you know if you have some inappropriate stuff on your social media and stuff this is the time to remove it because a lot of programs are gonna along that route to actually do a background check and the last thing you want to do is lose an interview because you said some inappropriate things four years ago and it can come and bite you so that is something that programs used to do but it's gonna be very important because what they're gonna see on the internet is how they're going to judge your character they're not going to have an in-person chance so that would be something that i would really advise everyone to is like go back look at your post from whenever or or the best or the smartest way is what i did was i changed my name so they could not never find me on the social media so <laughs> either way whatever works for you guys it's how it works whether you know just trim your name into two different parts so they won't find you ever but the best way is to just go back and look at that uh, programs also gonna look a lot into how you present yourself though you're not gonna have any personal interaction e even though everything is over the zoom and I'll be I'll be doing some fellowship interviews this year as well over the zoom so I'll have more information as I go through them but basically program is gonna look at a lot of inter and even if it's a zoom interview uh, I don't know about the residency yet but they do plan to do about four or five interviews so so don't expect that your interviews days will be shorter it's going to be the same you're going to still have five or six interviews uh, i have one fellowship interview a zoom interview that's supposed to start from eight o'clock and last till four o'clock and i'm already like what am i going to do sitting eight hours in front of a computer so so get used to it dress appropriately have a very good lighting in your background because you want to make sure that you you look good on that day and also for people from india you know if, if you have siblings you have parents who are going to use the internet i would just tell them to disconnect from the router just so you can have the maximum speed because i know how the how the uh, you know the broadband works back home so those are the few things also some of the new things that my program is coming up is to promote the program so some of the programs would do this what we're doing is calling is call as residency instagram where where we can we'll be promoting our program and have the prospective applicants come up there and look at how the programs look so be on the lookout for that because this year the programs are going to go the digital route of like you know trying to sell themselves like hey what we do just because they're not going to have any interaction with the students so these are some of the things that that my program, basically the University of Arkansas programs, are trying to come up with the, with the virtual virtual strategies. Thank you, thank you. Um, all right, Chad, let me go to you and then talk to Karuna and see what your thoughts are. And now switch to if we missed anything on what the students could do to prepare the applicants in addition to 
uh, what we've already uh, discussed. Uh, sure. Fantastic. So I just saw, first off, Corona, I wanted to congratulate you. I hope you're having, I know it's probably not easy, a uh, restful maternity leave with the, your newborn at home. So congratulations. That's fantastic. So I think we all touched on a lot of very important things. First off, I wanted to double back and say how important it is to realize that now that there isn't this cost prohibitive nature to interviewing, whether it be the time that it takes just to get somewhere versus the actual money that it takes to travel and get a hotel that everybody, both programs and applicants are very much going to be broadening the amount of interviews that they extend and then accept even. Uh, it's a lot easier to sit and have you know five back-to-back -back interviews on a Saturday when you're in the comfort of your own apartment versus actually having to geographically hop around and go to different places. So that's one thing that I've really been stressing with some of my applicants. Uh, another uh, second thing that we touched on that I want to dive deeper in, and I know Northwestern starting to rev up their uh, recruitment efforts. Most programs are going to have this Instagram page where they're going to either formally or informally just be doing spotlights on different uh, faculty and different interesting things that are going on with programs. And I think that's a very unique way for our applicants to get involved with the program and um, to show some type of participation and to stay informed. Through those social media um, outlets, there's also going to be a series or a lot of programs are going to have a series of what they're called uh, calling open houses which are going to be kind of informal ways for applicants to interact uh, with um, a panel of you know senior residents attendings and then even some uh, junior residents where they can ask questions and kind of emulate and replicate that um, that night before interview dinner that uh, we traditionally have had in the past so these are all things that i've been encouraging my applicants to get involved with and to kind of keep uh, keep an eye out for in addition to that uh, more so now than ever, I think it's really important for all of our applicants to reach out to mentors and even just friends, families, colleagues uh, that are involved in, in medicine in the respective regions and areas that they're uh, interviewing in. Uh, since we're going to be doing everything virtually, Zoom really is the great equalizer. So anything that we can do to kind of, uh, rather than just being a name on a sheet of paper, but try to connect with the program more individually and personally and have an individual, you know, a resident or an attending advocate for our applicants from the inside, that, that is only going to um, increase our chances of matching and then even just having a positive virtual interview experience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh...